There are many questions that can bother a person when we lose a loved one. Why did he have to die now? Will I ever get over this pain? She was so young, this can't be fair. Coping with loss is the topic of our discussion for today. Please join us. Hi everyone, welcome to Vantage Point. Before we begin the show, we want to express our sincere condolences to anyone who may be grieving at this time. And we pray that this show can be of help to those who are coping with loss. Natalie, have you ever experienced a death in the family that you'd be willing to talk about? Um, yes, I, I've lost relatives that were close more so to my parents, um, specifically on my mom's side. My uncle actually contracted COVID-19 in January of last year, in 2021. Um, and this was while he was living in California. So within the week of him contracting COVID, he actually ended up in the ICU shortly after and then later on passing away. Um, but the last death within my family that I remember more vividly personally would be of my great grandmother. I mean, I was only four or five years old, so I have really, really sweet memories of her being this older lady that always spoiled me um, whenever we would visit. But I still carry her memory with me every day. And thinking of my friends who have had family or parents or siblings that have passed away um, unexpectedly or devastatingly. It's the emotional repercussions that really stick with me because I often think about, you know, what if that was my family? What if down the road that's my mom or my dad or my brother? Um, and it's that that really sticks with me and it makes me think about what the future holds. JR, how about yourself? You know, during the pandemic as well, just like Sister Ned, I had actually lost my aunt in the Philippines uh, due to complications with, with COVID-19 and other underlying health conditions and and I wasn't really that close with her but seeing you know my mom and obviously their side of the family kind of go through that devastation of finding out what happened and you know I'd lost my grandparents in sudden moments you know my grandmother on my mom's side passed away when we were on vacation back in 2008 and you know my grandfather on my dad's side passed suddenly years ago um, I've also had close friends pass uh, people that I've spent amazing memories and moments with you know and, and those were just as hard uh, a friend of mine actually that you know we graduated together we graduated high school together we were close friends from the beginning to, all the way to the end of high school and when i found out later that he passed you know that was very difficult people say there are generally five stages of grieving we have denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance in your opinion jr which is the hardest stage? Um, uh, probably acceptance. You know, that's the toughest part for me. You know, trying to come to terms with the situation and actually believing that this person is no longer around. In some ways, I'm in a constant internal battle between denial and acceptance. I'm just going back and forth in this cycle. Um, you know, even in the most heartbreaking situations in my life, you know, I sometimes say to myself, in a way, this didn't happen. I'd say that, like JR, acceptance is probably the most difficult for me too um i feel like denial naturally comes with that resistance to accept because it like you said it's so hard to believe that somebody could suddenly be gone now while opinions may vary on which stage in the grieving process is hardest there's no denying that death can come to any one of us at any given moment but maybe there are those who are wondering well why is there death in the first place? Let's listen to what the Bible says here in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, and the verse is 27. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So why is there death? Because the Lord God made it so. Well, why did God appoint death to man? This is revealed in Romans. Chapter 5, and the verse is 12. Romans 5.12, 
Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. So death, or the cessation of our breath, is the consequence, or one of the consequences, of sin. And as members of the Church of Christ, we learned, right, in our Bible studies on doctrines, that actually the full payment for sin will be meted out on Judgment Day. Now, if any of our viewers would like to learn more about that specific topic, Judgment Day, we invite you to view another one of the Iglesia Christos programs called INC International Edition. On a specific episode, they discuss that topic. As for us today, the focus of our discussion is coping with loss. And what is it that we've learned so far from the Bible or based on the Bible? That death, as harsh as it may be, is a reality that we cannot avoid. It's just a matter of time. Okay, but what if someone was to challenge that? Um, what if they think that God is wrong for appointing death? Um, maybe they even think because of losing somebody that they love or that's close to them, they feel that God got the timing wrong. And what then? Then let's ask the Bible this, Natalie. Are we in a position to question the decisions of our Maker? The Bible answers here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, the verses 9. Woe to those who quarrel with their Maker, those who are nothing but potsherds among the potsherds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, What are you making? Does your work say the potter has no hands? So based on the Holy Scriptures, no man or woman is in a position to question the decisions of our Maker, who is the one true God, the Father who is in heaven. Why don't we try looking at it this way? Isn't it that in our respective country or state or province or town, there are government officials. And for the sake of law and order, isn't it that decisions are made, regulations are implemented by said officials? From traffic regulations to public school policies to laws regarding owning property or starting up a business. And we do know how to respect those decisions that are made. Well then, all the more we should yield and surrender to the decisions that are made by our Maker, the Almighty God, the One who created every one of us, as well as everything that is in heaven and on earth. So instead of questioning God's decisions when it comes to life and death, Brother Felmore, what should we do? I'm glad you asked that question, JR. And this now is the last Bible verse that we'll be reading for today. But before we do, we hope that those who are grieving would listen well, and we pray that this message would give us hope. It's found here in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 28 to 33, and verses 25 to 26. When life is heavy and hard to take, go off by yourself. Enter the silence. Bow in prayer. Don't ask questions. Wait for hope to appear. Don't run from trouble. Take it full face. The worst is never the worst. Why? Because the master won't ever walk out and fail to return. If he works severely, he also works tenderly. His stockpiles of loyal love are immense. He takes no pleasure in making life hard, in throwing roadblocks in the way. God proves to be good to the man who passionately waits, to the woman who diligently seeks. It's a good thing to quietly hope, quietly hope for help from God. So when dealing with the loss of a loved one, which feels like what the Bible said is heavy and hard to take, what should we do? Get angry with God? Complain against Him? No. Instead, the Bible teaches us it's a good thing to quietly hope. Quietly hope for help from God. 
So God is the one who can help us to get through the sorrow. How can servants of God approach Him for help? The Bible stated, Go off by yourself, enter the silence, bow in prayer. In other words, we ought to calm down, clear our mind, gather our thoughts, so that we can pray properly to our Almighty God. And if we as members of the Church of Christ would do this sincerely, what can we expect? The Bible promises us God proves to be good to the man who passionately waits, to the woman who diligently seeks. You know, Brother Felmar, hearing that, it reminds me of how important it is to have daily devotional prayers, just to have that moment of silence and to really calm down, like you said earlier, um, that it's important to have that moment with God, to be able to lay it all out when everything is heavy and hard to take. And further to what you just mentioned, Natalie, many members of the Church of Christ even make the extra effort to go to the chapel or the house of worship to say their prayer there, even when it isn't a day of worship service. And this is open to all members of the Church of Christ. At any time, we can coordinate with the respective minister so that they can open the house of worship for us. And we can also have a personal prayer there to seek God's comfort and peace so that we can get through the trials we may be dealing with, like losing a loved one. And this brings us to the end of our show for today. We thank everyone who joined us. And again, thank you to Natalie and JR. We'll see everyone next time. Give us a thumbs up below if you relate to today's episode on coping with loss. Follow us on Instagram at vantagepoint.inc for more content. And before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the corner for future episodes.